I think Jimmy Johnson did, did the record. He, he cut a couple of tracks. Uh-huh. Did uh, you play on that? Did I play? did play oh, on that. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. he, uh, he cut two songs on the record. Uh-huh. And, yeah, God, Jimmy's amazing. But um, I think they brought him in for initial uh, recording session. And then we started, you know, I got the gig. You got the gig. And, uh, awesome. The hand of God. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, we started writing for that. But I remember you doing that most of the tour, that beginning White Snake tour, in the in a cast. Was it a soft cast or was uh, no? No, it was a, a yeah. There was no soft cast back then. Was that thing a, throbbing every night? It, or was, it was, was throbbing it? every night. But what you had to do it. Did you? you know, um, I, I learned some new moves. Okay, I was going to say you couldn't run all over the place. No, fortunately. As far as performance goes, we were opening up for for our Motley Crue, okay. the Girls, Girls, Girls tour, mm-hmm. and so we didn't have the full stage. Okay. By the time that we headlined, my cast was off. Okay. So I was able to run around and sure. you know I, I I was doing therapy and you know making right. sure that that it wasn't you know that I did all the proper procedures to make sure that my leg was going to you know be strong enough to be able to sustain running yeah. around stage and all that did yeah. the record take off right away or did 87 you, yeah i mean from um, that from the beginning of the tour was the record already taken <laughs> off or was it well the mtv video was really made an impact yeah made an impact so by the time so let's say in Ju- in june june july we started um, i think yeah or late june we started the touring with motley Crue, mm-hmm. and then by october we were headlining Okay. Yeah, on our own, you know. So, so it took off pretty quick. It took off really, really quick. Yeah, yeah. there were like uh, three videos back to back. That yes. were, you know, uh, it was still the night mm-hmm. before we even hit hit the stage. Then here I go again, which took the song to number one. Yeah. From that record, eighty seven, and uh, and then um, and then uh, uh, it's this love. Right. You know, three bona fide and then, hits. No, actually, there were four. We did. Uh, Give me all your love tonight. Right. Later on, because they they wanted to extend the tour. Mm-hmm. And you know, back in the day, you, you know, you, you tour for as long as you had MTV videos. Right. So if you have four videos, yeah, you're you're out there for over a year. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the longest tour you've ever done? Probably, um, probably over over a year. Probably a year and with a half. Here, with, uh, that would, probably would have been Great White. Ooh, yeah. Then, what what year was that? That would have been in the 90s. Uh, we were on John Kolodner's label. Geffen? Um No, it was... Uh, the album was Can't Get There From Here. The, mm-hmm. uh, the, it was Portrait. Oh, Portrait. Yeah. CBS Portrait, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know John had go- gone over to Portrait. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I love working with John. Yeah, John's he great. Fan. He's, he's a genius. Oh, yeah. He's the a best. genius. He's like a, like a musical savant. Giant, in the you know, industry. he hears things and he goes, he either hates it or loves it, right? And Amazing, thank god he loved us and uh, he loved that record that we did. But, um, you know, getting to work with guys like that was really cool. Uh, who produced it? Actually, Jack Blades produced that album, mm-hmm. uh, Night Rangers Jack yeah, Blades. Yeah. Yes, and I was like, uh, wow, this is either going to be really great to be produced by a bass player or terrible, <laughs> and it was great from the moment. I walked in, you know, he was just one of those guys. He goes, you know, you really remind me of Boz Burrell from Bad Company, the way you play. I want you to play like that on this record. And he goes, uh, I'll never forget it. He goes, I want you to listen to nothing but the Rolling Stones for two months before we cut this record. And it was the greatest advice I ever got because uh, I love Bill Wyman, you know, and uh, he just always had something groovy going on, but cool, yeah, you know, and it was yeah. the greatest advice I ever got. But you know, it, it, I agree with you, Bill Wyman. Uh, you know, outstanding bassist. Oh but God. also, there were certain tracks that were cut by Keith Richards. Keith Richards, just because the whole band was not there. Right. <laughs> yeah. They just picked up the bass and started playing. Yeah. If you listen to uh, "Sympathy for the Devil." He played on that. He played on that. A bunch of it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, and you could pretty much tell. Yeah. Like, uh, and then Willie Weeks. Oh, Willie Weeks. Willie Weeks. Yeah. Uh, played on uh, on only rock and roll. He played on that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he did. You know. So, uh, but, yeah. but yes, I mean, if you listen to like the really early Stone stuff, I mean, there was some really outside the box, not typical of a an English white boy, you know, playing that. Yeah. That way. You know, he was uh, he had a lot of funk. There's totally. something as you 
you know the Stones. You know the way that that um, that uh, was uh, Charlie Watts plays. Is like no other. Right? Yeah, it's amazing, and, and everything's the on the up, thing, yeah. up, like Keith Richards, like uh, uh, yeah, uh, on the upbeat, you know, which makes Jagger do those moves, and it, yeah. I think Ron Wood cut a lot of that bass in the early oh. phases stuff too, and like Maggie May, I think he played one of my favorite right? bass players of all time. Yeah, Ronnie. I mean, dating back to the uh, the Jeff Beck group. Yeah. So Wyman had it. He had it tough there, you know, <laughs> uh, between Keith and Ron Wood. You know, he had to really bring his A game. And but it, what a fabulous player! He just really moves those songs along so well. So tell me, who are you playing with right now? I am currently still... I've been playing with George Lynch mm -hmm. uh, for many, many years. Is this Lynch Mob? Or? Yeah, okay. it's Lynch Mob. Mm -hmm. um, we did a record last year called The Brotherhood, which I'm really proud of, and we wrote that together. But uh, I've been playing with George for so long. Now, George is... Uh, he's one of those guys that's in the conversation, you know, with with Eddie and with Randy and you know he's in that conversation yeah, when I was in town yeah. in the late 70s yeah. there were the big three yeah. and that's it that was the big three he's right one there. of those dudes yeah. you know and um, those are, that's a quite a group but you know I've been playing with him so long he's so good that sometimes I go play with other guys and I'm like ah oh, okay you know because <laughs> yeah. he's just so good you know and um, I've been playing with him. I was playing with him back in 2000, and I've been back in the band for five years. And uh, we got a, we got a cool thing happening. He's uh, so talented, you know. And um, that's why I stick around. Is he's one of those OG guys, you well, know? What does uh, George listen to? George is into all the stuff we're talking about too. The Jeff Beck group, and mm -hmm. he loves the blues, and he's he's got a lot of projects going on. Um, you know, with Doug Panic from King's X yes. and things like that. Yes. But he's he's into funk. He's into all of that. And uh, But there's also a, a jazzy, exploratory oh, yeah. side to George's playing that there can is. really yeah. go cosmic. He loves to jam, you yeah. know, and uh, I, I love that. We get to do a little bit of that. We got a little thing in the set where we, we stretch out and swing on some jazz stuff, and he blows, you know, some, some really cool stuff. But... Um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be playing with him. I'm uh, also excited. I was going to tell you about this. Uh, we've got this new band, <laughs> Rough Riot, which is actually three of the Quiet Riot guys, Paul Shortino, Carlos, mm -hmm. and myself from that record that we did, QR4, and then two of the Rough Cut guys. So um, we're just kind of starting out. Uh, we've got our first gig in Vegas on the second, but we're doing a mix between those songs from our record and some rough mm -hmm. cut songs and then you know we'll start yeah. writing and see where that goes how are you guys you know? handling the uh, the scheduling because i mean you're all busy we are and that's going to be the toughest part as you well know you know these kind of bands are that scheduling is always the hardest thing you know very hard yeah because at some point you have to have a priority yes whatever that might be and then you have projects Kind of like uh, satellite projects, you know, yes. revolving around that certain priority. Yeah. Um, you're playing with one of my favorite bands who I opened up for when I was like 13, the Guess Who. Oh, the Guess Who? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love... Oh that must God. be so cool. It is so know, cool. It was so cool because... Uh, were the 60s and 70s a big influence for you musically? They actually were. And I know it's a little bit before my generation, but um, I always grew up playing with guys that were older than me. Mm. Uh, I wasn't one of those take lessons guys. I just learned everything the hard way from older guys. And um, they turned me on to a lot of that stuff. You know, the Guess Who and Steppenwolf and, you know, of course, the Beatles and all that stuff. But um, I was lucky enough to get those... Um, like Hendrix and you know things like that and ELP and all those beautiful early influences. You Love know. ELP. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Before Greg Lake Keith passed yeah. away, I, uh, yeah. I I became close friends with him and uh, yeah. What a, you know, one of the things that I did, <laughs> I never told him what a great uh, fan I was of the band. No? No, no, because I had learned not to do that. See, because, you know, okay, imagine if somebody comes up to you and say, oh, Sean, man, I, I grew up listening to you. You're like my biggest influence. I have for every single one of your records. You, you kind of like, and this person happens to be a musician too. 
And mm -hmm. I found out that when I would do that to people, because I have so many heroes of mine, they kind of like, I was not at the same level anymore with them. Now I, I was this fan. I was yeah. not a peer. All right. And I wanted to be a peer, but you can't be both. Well, I, I, I agree and I disagree because I, I walked into your layer here and there's about 40 platinum records. And just think of all the kids that look up to what you've done in your body of work, you know. And it's, it, I'm sure it feels good when they go, Rudy, you know, you were such a big influence and you, know, you were such a big influence on me. And, you know, you, you see, but in, with you, you we are peers. You were, we were both in the same bands. Yeah. We played the same circuit. We hang. Yeah. yeah. We, we jam together. Mm -hmm. We're peers. Yeah. You know, but to actually meet somebody and become their friend who has no real reference yeah. and they have us, as we become better friends, we connect based yeah. on our references and our trajectory and, and getting to know that, oh, we know the same people and we play the same places and we did the same things here and yeah. that, you know, and the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. You're right. It's, it's more challenging. You're right. You know, uh, for, for example, I mean, and, and it's, I, I grew up playing the Guess Who music. Mm-hmm. You know, we did in high school. That was part of the of the playlist. American Woman and These Eyes and, you know, yeah. Laughing, all those songs, you know. And so I'm playing in the band and and you must agree with me. I mean, I, I guess you will. Playing with the original drummer of yeah. any band mm -hmm. that has recorded, what a treat. Yes. As a bass player. Absolutely. Because you're playing with a guy that actually recorded the parts and yeah. your bass lines are going to fit. Yep. You don't have to adapt your plan because somebody's doing an interpretation right. of what was on the record. You know, so most of my career I play with people that were not the original drummer, right. with the exceptions like Frankie mm -hmm. and then Tommy Aldridge when we were in White Snake and we recorded a slip of the tongue. Love so Tommy. those songs yeah. were the you know, we played them just like they were recorded because we were, you know, the band on the record. Mm -hmm. But this is, from that point on, up until now, this was the only other experience of playing with the original right. drummer. And I got to tell you, working with, with a drummer that started playing before rock and roll existed, a lot of those guys that, you know, from that, that started recording in, in the 60s, you know, with the British Invasion, they came from a swing jazz background. Right. You know, I mean, and of course, rock and roll existed in the 50s, you know, mm -hmm. but even those guys, mm -hmm. those guys, they were playing before before there was rock and roll. It yeah. was an evolution yeah. from the big bands, the swing bands that actually became cheaper to hire a trio or, or a quartet. Mm -hmm. Much cheaper, four guys. Right. So we're only going to pay you for four people instead of bringing in the whole orchestra with you. That's how rock bands became popular just like djs are popular now. oh my god just, just bring your laptop <laughs> you know? i know what you're saying um when i worked with ronnie montrose it was like that i'm like god that's the guy that actually wrote those songs you know yeah. and when i got to play with him i'll never forget just the hair stood up on my arms i'm like there it is man you know he still got it so i i can totally relate to that and that that's neat for us as musicians um to be able to do that you know. What what other artists have you performed with that that has that there it is factor? You know, I I just did a tour with Stephen Adler from Guns N' Roses of um, to Australia this year, mm -hmm. and man, when that guy sits down behind the drum set, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it he plays those songs, there it is. Yeah, there it is. You know, it, it, he doesn't have to think about it. He, he's behind the he's got that behind thing mm -hmm. and. We locked up just beautifully, and uh, you know, Guns and Roses, Guns and Roses. But when Steven yeah. Adler sits behind that kit yeah. and plays those songs, there it is. Did it's you no adapt question. your playing? Because uh, you, I know you go from fingers to pick. Yeah, I'm a finger guy like you, mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes we have to grab those picks to play certain things. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I've just found you can pull off that really fast stuff with your fingers, but for me, I think it's it's more even for me if I yeah, use the is. pick. It is, yeah. But I it took me a long time yeah. to do that. Yeah, you know, I couldn't. I